we will uh, go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to talk about web components, not the um, uh, nutmeg is not actually a nut, so we're not talking about nuts. Just so we get that out on the table. All right, so I'm Abraham. Um, I'm a Google developer expert in web technology. Um, I came down from Madison, Wisconsin, where I work at a company called Bendyworks. Um, I was in Columbus last year for this event and I had a lot of fun, so I wanted to come back again this year. Uh, I initially wrote this presentation with my coworker, Pearl, so if I get anything wrong, please tweet at her and tell her that it's her fault because she had a different conference to go to. She wasn't here to fact check me and make sure I got it all right. But that's, that's her problem, not mine. It's not my problem I got something wrong. Uh, you can get these slides at slides.today. Um, so you don't have to take photos. You don't have to, you can get the resource links later. That's all on slides.today. Um, and it'll still be there tomorrow. It's not only today. <laughs> so what is a web component? Um, because it's kind of this umbrella term that we don't think about too much, or like it consists of a lot of different parts. Um, so I want to kind of give you a quick high level of like what a web component is. Um, the idea is you're making HTML components, HTML elements um, yourself that the browser understands just like it understands a div. So an, a browser knows how to render a div. That's super easy. But what is a, what's a web browser going to do so with something like this? This is an HTML tag that will render a Twitter user profile in a nice little car. This is an actual web component I wrote with Nutmeg. Um, and all you do to get it on a page is put this tag on it. So that's what we're going to talk about, how, about doing. Um, and one of the other tangential parts of why web components are kind of a thing to begin with um, is a little bit of a story. So. You're starting a new job, doing web development stuff. Your manager comes and says, we have a spec. We want you to put an image on the page. And you're like, I know how to do web development. That's easy. I just put an image tag, and we're set. A few weeks later, the manager comes back and says, we've got all these images that are breaking because they you know, got deleted, and now our users are getting broken content. We need to fix this. So. <laughs> Maybe not fix it in the best way, but instead we'll put a kitten photo. <laughs> you know, you think to yourself, okay, I know jQuery, I can, I can do this. I'll just, you know, do an error handler on all the image tags. Anytime, you know, an image fails to load, we'll just swap it out for this known kitten photo, and it's, it's great. All your users are, you know, maybe they're not getting the content they want, but they're at least happy because there's cute kittens. But the problem is, you're not. Instagram for kittens. So you need to actually you know, figure out when those images are breaking a lot and have your content admins go in and fix those. So um, we'll, we'll do a new spec where we'll log all the broken images. Um, this is pretty easy. You know, you can, it's almost the same as the error handling one, actually. Um, and so now anytime an image doesn't render, it'll still display a kitten but it'll also tell your web ad your content admins and they can go in and fix it. Now your, your site is showing a few kittens, but mostly the content. So you figure, let's make it a little prettier. When an image is gonna be displayed, we'll have it do a nice little fade in. And I bet you're thinking to yourself, we'll probably use jQuery. Yeah, and a global function. Because just note, Global functions are not good. You should avoid that. <coughs> um, but it, it does work. The problem is, is that this development happening over many years with many developers, you know, you might have some image stuff in one file. You might have some fading in stuff in another file. You've got some global stuff. You get spaghetti code that's really hard to manage. And it's really hard that, you know, if you uh, change the names of one of the attributes, are you going to find every place that you use that? Probably not. So this is why we have web components, because you can encapsulate 
all of that logic into a single set of files. And it's not just the code that runs the component. Encapsulating, en encapsulation also works at runtime. It keeps the HTML of that component uh, encapsulated from the rest of the site. It keeps the styles uh, encapsulated so that your background weird green from the entire site doesn't affect the internals of your component or the you know, weird colors of your component doesn't affect the rest of the page. Um, and it also encapsulates the JavaScript so that you have a, you present a nice defined API of your component to the parent page that is uh, rendering that component. <coughs> it's reusable, so you can write one thing and use it in a bunch of different places. Um, a good example is uh, if you have you know, an, um, a number of different kind of microsites and a single authentication server, you can write authentication widgets to show sign-in buttons in a web component, and that same code can run on all of your different sites very easily. Uh, you can also um, publish it to NPM, and other open source users can use it very easily. Uh, and then it's composable. Um, and this is kind of uh, hand wavy. <laughs> <laughs> or I should do jazz hands. Um, so composable is basically you can construct your DOM of your HTML and your page through custom elements that are nested within each other and nested within standard HTML elements. So everything, bas you basically, you create this Twitter user element and it, you can use it in your DOM structure just like you would use another div. Um, it just behaves a little differently. Uh, if, if that's not enough of a pitch for web components, stick in this room because the next, um, Chris is next talking about why you might use web components instead of frameworks. Um, and hopefully, I, I don't, I don't actually, is Chris here? I don't know Chris, so I don't actually know if his presentation's any good, but <laughs> don't let me down, Chris. All right, now, we talked a little bit about why you might want to use web components in general. Let's talk a little bit about why you might want to use specifically Nutmeg, um, other than the fact that it's delicious on eggnog. Um, so I like to think of Nutmeg components as vanilla web components with a little spice. And why do I say this? Well, it uses the platform, but it doesn't hide the platform. A lot of web component frameworks abstract everything away so you don't know what it's doing underneath. It's accomplishing what you need, but it's not, uh, it's not, you don't know how it's doing that. So if you need to do something different or if you run into issues, it, there's no help in how you can fix that. It also has best practices baked, baked in. Um, <laughs> web, web development has a lot of legacy. Uh, there's, a, there's a really good blog post on the um, like 500 different types of, of values and behaviors that input tags have. Um, I recommend you find that and look at it because you will never want to use them again except you have to. Um, so Nutmeg handles some of the weird edge cases that are legacy and, and are stick around because JavaScript. Um, it has test swing, a test suite built in. Uh, people don't test things enough. <laughs> I will say this right now. Um, so one of my goals was to make testing very easy. Um, and this does it pretty well. Uh, the other uh, nice thing about um, test is I forgot what I was going to say. Apparently, I didn't test this presentation well enough. <laughs> uh, and then it's easy to publish. Um, and part of publishing is putting it on NPM so that other projects can use it. Um, a couple of the components that I'll talk about today are available on NPM, and you can use them. And I have, I have Nutmeg components running uh, in an Angular app, on a PHP site, uh, in a Rails app, um, and in just a, a vanilla um, JavaScript app with no framework. So uh, a couple of things that Nutmeg kind of consists of. You don't have to worry about this too much, but essentially 
There's a creation step where it will generate a scaffold, it will, it will scaffold a component for you. There's the seed, and that's kind of the runtime edge case handling. Um, and then there's the CLI, and that handles building stuff and running tests and all that good jazz. So I'm sure everybody, I, I shouldn't assume, I hope everybody has installed a node package before. This is how you install something globally, except you don't have to do this. You don't have to install anything. You just do npm init. Um, this is actually a handle little npm command that node added, um, I think an <coughs> npm 5.2-ish. Um, so basically what this will do is it will dynamically download the nutmeg slash create package um, and execute that locally. Um, and it'll handle, it won't install anything, it'll just generate a component for you um, and it doesn't leave any mess in your path to deal with. Uh, and then you give it the name of what your element is gonna be. Uh, it does have to have a dash in it because standards Really, it's because uh, um, so a brow all the built-in elements in a browser don't have dashes. So when the browser sees an element with a dash, it knows, oh, this is a custom element. I'm going to handle its behavior differently. Uh, and then you can, you can give it a list of properties. Um, and these properties are essentially the public API of your component. Uh, you can certainly add more later, but this is a quick kind of way to do it. Um, and because Nutmeg is written in TypeScript, it uses TypeScript types. So you can, you can do a string, or you can also do this super complex interface that does crazy stuff, or that does ridiculous stuff. Uh, so that Twitter user example that I showed earlier, this is how you might generate the initial component for that Twitter user uh, component. All right. When you run that initialization state uh, step, you get a couple of things. You, there's basically two main files that you care about. Uh, one of them is uh, Twitter user.ts. Uh, so a couple of things, you'll note there's a .ts, this is TypeScript. Um, if you're not familiar with TypeScript, it's pretty much JavaScript, but you can say this thing is a string, this thing is a number, and if you try to add the two of them together, TypeScript will say no bad developer. So I recommend using it, it's very good. Um, it has baked in custom elements v1 and shadow DOM v1. Um, those are two of the main standards that the web component umbrella consists of. Um, and then lit HTML, uh, which we will talk about in a minute. Uh, and then the other thing is the test file. And this is, this has Mocha examples built in. Um, it uses the Karma test runner, which basically says, hey, take this file, run it in this browser, and run these tests. Um, and then it has built in to run on uh, Chrome, and you can also configure it to do Firefox and Safari and pretty much any other browser. And then something else that's key to look at is the CI configuration, except it's not actually CI configuration, it's configurations, plural. In it, it, it auto-generates CircleCI, TravisCI, and AppVe are configurations so that with one click, you can have your component test running in CI anytime you try to do an update um, to make sure that you, don't, you never have code in a broken state. Ah, but best of all, it comes with Webpack pre-configured. I, I spent the two weeks configuring prefect uh, Webpack so that you don't have to. Um, who's, who's configured Webpack before? A couple of people? All right, we'll try to keep it at that number and have the rest of you not worry about it because it's, um, it's actually a lot better than it, than it used to be, but it's still a lot of work. Uh, so we talked a little bit about this Twitter user file. Um, initially, it, we'll talk a, about a couple of the key little bits. Uh, one of them is the import. Um, if you come from more of a traditional node path, this is basically a require, just um, the new standard ES module method of doing it. Uh, there's two things that are from Nutmeg, seed and property. Um, 
We'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. And then HTML, isn't this great? You get to import all of HTML, except it's not actually HTML, HTML, it's lit HTML, uh, which is now what we can talk about. So this is a project from the Polymer team. Uh, Polymer is a web component framework that um, came out of Google. Um, and basically this lets you use JavaScript template literals to generate, uh, JavaScript string literals to generate templates. Um, and then efficiently render and re-render them into the DOM how you want. Um, y if you come from a React background, you can kind of think of it like a virtual DOM-ish. It, you know, it generally accomplishes a similar goal. Uh, I had to, so <laughs> these are back ticks. Um, I had to circle them because otherwise you would never find them. I, could, I should have just put a white screen and been like, look at the back ticks. Um, so this is a, a JavaScript string literal. Inside of that, you can put HTML or any kind of strings. And this, for lit HTML, it's HTML, so we put HTML. Um, because it's a JavaScript string literal, you can put variables in it. So whatever, instead of using a hard-coded name, it'll look for a variable name and put the value of it in there. And then this is where the magic of lit HTML comes in. This is called a tagged template literal. And this is, this is basically kind of a, f uh, you're basically creating a bit of a function in, in a, a w as kind of a way to look at it. Um, now you have your template. It's pretty easy. Uh, so that you can give it a value. In this case, we're, we're saying name Sam. We're passing that to your template. So that is then going to return a cached, efficient, compiled template, which you then say, hey, let render that into the document body. And this is kind of a short bit of HTML to render into your entire HTML body, but you could certainly do it. But then the nice thing is, is you can call it again with a different oh. name, and it'll efficiently know what little bit of your DOM to change. Um, so this is very, very quick. Um, and very close to using the platform, because tagged template literals are a JavaScript standard feature. Uh, they have a lot of different features that um, if you're building a Nutmeg component, I recommend you use, so this is a good place to learn more about lit HTML. Okay, so to, to get off of that side fork path, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> tangent, tangent. To get off that tangent. Uh, so we're now defining a class, Twitter user. It's going to extend the Nutmeg seed class. Um, so that will, that will give your class kind of the edge case handling that seed provides. Uh, and then you have to call constructor and super, uh, also because legacy JavaScript. Um, that will basically make it that the context of this, the keyword this, uh, will behave the way it should. Um, in general, just always use constructor super in a web component. Uh, one of the things under the hood that this will do is we'll attach a shadow DOM. Shadow DOM is this whole other topic that I could talk on for hours. Um, essentially, that's the key part of the encapsulation. That takes it so you've got your DOM tree, and then it creates kind of a separate DOM tree uh, that has your component code, and then it keeps it kind of separate from the rest of it for JavaScript and CSS-ness. Um, um, I recommend you look at, you learn more about Shadow DOM because it's really neat and powerful, um, but it's also complex. So we won't talk about it too much here. Uh, and then the next thing we're gonna do is, so we had this, this, pro this public API through your component that we defined. Um, you might notice this at property this is a decorator. Um, TypeScript makes it so that decorators in JavaScript work. And uh, Nutmeg uses a property to basically say, hey, anytime this value changes, um, re-render the DOM, re-render your, your UI. That's, that's basically what this does. Um, it also handles some other little magic bits, like if you um, pass in a certain type, it'll make sure that it's converted to that type and 
some other edge cases like that. But it doesn't have to be a complex value. You can also do booleans and strings and invent your own types. Um, and then the next two key parts of what this base class, uh, of what this component class will have is one is style. You just put whatever CSS you want in into here. Um, the nice thing about this is that you can, you can just reference things into a div, uh, you know, so div background blue. And that's totally fine because it'll be encapsulated to only the HTML in your component. It will not affect, that CSS will not affect all of the divs on the page. Um, and then template is the nutmeg, how nutmeg defines the templates we talked about from lit. Um, so an example of some of the nice added features that lit will provide. So you'll note this until, this is a directive that lit provides that basically says until user loaded is done, we're just going to show the loaded template so you can have a little spinner and then you have an Ajax request and once that's done, it'll automatically swap out and show your real data. Um, so that's, that's an example of some of the niceties that lit HTML will provide to you. Uh, and then finally, you actually tell the browser, hey, any anytime you see an HTML tag of Twitter dash user, hand its functionality off to this class Twitter user that I have defined. Um, and that's in essence how a web component works. All right, we're done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so you've built a little bit of a web component in Nutmeg. Uh, NPM start is the standard node way of running your thing. Um, in this case, it'll start up a browser. It'll load multiple of your components you've written in that browser. So you can, uh, this is an example of another component that I wrote. And you can have multiple of them in different states or different configurations so that as you're editing, you can see how your changes affect multiple different types of it. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I've got this complex code path but I never try it until someone complains that it's broken because you can see them all at once. And it's got live reloads. So anytime you edit, it'll automatically refresh. Um, that was semi-fun to configure in Webpack. Uh, and then tests. So uh, npm test is the easy command to run your test in, in uh, node package. Um, it's fairly standard JavaScript testing syntax. This uses uh, Mocha, so you've got expects. Um, I did a little bit of custom stuff to, uh, to generate fixture components for you to run the tests on. Um, I like to do tests like expect, you know, more feature-facing tests of I expect that this text is available. Um, I've also had some fun experience uh, testing things like um, CSS colors on particular items are changing because I provide some CSS variables as part of my public API. So I want to make sure that those continue to work. So we talked a little bit about the CI configuration. If you write your tests and you do the one click to get Travis running, um, anytime you do a pull request, you should, you should be doing pull requests to your own repo um, or somebody else contributes and does a pull request. Uh, it'll run CI and it'll tell you if something's broken. Um, one of the, the, the key reasons that you want to have CI set up is so that you can configure tools like Renovate. Renovate is a great little free app. Um, you can also pay for it if you want to use it in a more um, business fashion, that anytime one of your dependencies has an update, they will open a PR updating that dependency on your app. So the nice thing about this is uh, two months or so ago, I released an update to Nutmeg that reduced its ship size by 25%. That means that if you have tests running, you have CI running, you have Renovate bot running, your component will automatically magically get smaller because I did something and you didn't have to do anything. Uh, I highly recommend you check out RenovateBot for all of your apps because 
Um, it's super handy. Although if you have a lot of stuff, then <laughs> every time TypeScript gets an update, I get 15 pull requests because I have lots of projects that use it. So that's one of the downsides. But you can also configure it so that it'll auto-merge things if tests pass. Uh, so then publishing. So you built this cool thing. You want to share it with the world. Um, NPM is how basically all JavaScript is shared publicly. And they do private repos as well, so you can share it internally at your company. Um, and it's pretty easy. You basically run NPM publish. You, you do need an NPM account, but that's easy and free. Uh, and then Nutmeg will generate multiple versions of your component. So at the base level, it'll have an ES module version. That's very easy to pull into Rollup or Webpack or other um, more modern build tools. But at the same time, it also generates an efficient, minified, um, and uglified version for shipping over the web. So this .min, you can just load that in a script tag, and it'll just run perfectly fine. Like this. Um, Unpackage is a great CDN for stuff co host for packages hosted on NPM. I guess that's a, a little redundant. I always think of like node package packages or NPM packages as node package manager packages. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so this is a, a super easy way. If you publish things to NPM, you can very easily load them however you want. Unpackage is free and um, is a great CDN. But you can also import them. So I have an Angular app that is using multiple components. Um, and you can just import it, and it'll work. You can, you can lazy load it if you need, if you're using Webpack's um, dynamic import. Um, and then once you've required that dependency, it's easy. You just put this tag in your page, and it renders. <coughs> um, this is another component built in Nutmeg that is a node package manager package displaying package, I guess, is what it would be. <laughs> uh, hooray! <laughs> um, and actually, since we're celebrating, I'm going to take a quick photo so we can show, I can show people how much fun we're having today. If my camera works. I have not upgraded to the new Pixel 3, so it's, it magically got slower in the last week. I don't know how that happened. Awesome. All right. We might have time for a quick demo afterwards because I, um, I rewrote half the slides yesterday and I didn't time it. I didn't test the timing of it, so we're a little ahead of schedule. Um, so if Nutmeg doesn't float your boat, um, there are some good alternatives that I would recommend you check out. One of them is Stencil.js. Um, that's from the Ionic team. If you're, fam if you're not familiar with Ionic, it's a framework for building cross-platform um, apps for web, Android, and iOS. Um, Stencil, Stencil has some really neat lazy loading properties. Um, so it will generate a registry of your components and then lazily load them as it's needed. Um, so it's really, it does some really neat stuff with that. Uh, and it uses JSX if you are a React fan. Um, or I guess specifically if you're a JSX fan. Uh, and then Lit Element is um, the tooling that Polymer, the Polymer team is building around Lit HTML. Um, it's the successor to Polymer. Uh, it is also a good thing to check out. Um, they have a lot of tooling around it. Um, I haven't used it as much. It's still kind of in the building stage, so it's not really quite prime time ready. Um, these are designed a little bit more towards uh, building sites with many components, whereas Nutmeg is geared a little bit more towards you build a component that for many different sites. All right. How many times did I, did I screw up a lot? Did you have to tweet at Perl? I, even if I didn't, you should probably tweet at Perl. Um, she's in New York at a uh, Women Tech Makers conference, so I'm sure she's having lots of fun. And Not to say that Cincinnati food isn't good, but 
New York food is kind of better than everywhere else, is what I hear. So, um, okay, so I work at Bendyworks. Um, so if you need help building web components, please let me know. Um, I can help you out. All the resources you can get at slides.today. Um, if you're interested in Nutmeg, you can go to nutmeg.tools to find out more. Um, so I'm Abraham, and uh, we could do questions or we could do a demo. Or we could leave. <laughs> demo? All right. We'll see how this goes. Because unplanned for demos always work great. Oh, actually, is there Wi-Fi? Okay. Did I manage to sell everybody on the wonders of web components? I, I'm a big fan. All right, does that just work, or do I need to do anything else? Hooray, internet. The lifeblood of developers. All right. Uh, what component? Maybe we should make an Ohio DevFest component. There we go. Now I can see. All right, so does anybody remember the command? That's me. Nutmeg. All right, so Ohio Dev. Fest. Um, maybe it should take a year. So 2018 would be. This way we can use the same component next year. Oh, I should probably make that bigger, huh? Is that good? Okay. All right. Um, should we? Maybe we'll do. Awesome as a boolean. So if you had fun, you can say yes. Otherwise, you can say no. Does that sound good? Um, and we'll see. I haven't optimized this installation step too much, so it might take um, not too long. So uh, what that, that generated the scaffolding, and then now it's installing the dependencies that that scaffolded component will use. Um, and that also has not really been optimized. Um, for a while, there's this weird problem where some, some uh, I think it's actually dependent on your terminal, but those emojis, some of them have like two spaces after them, and some of them have one space after them. It was really bugging me for a while. <laughs> all right, so first of all, you can just do npm start, and we'll see the base um, components just running. So this is, this it out of the box generates four, four or initializes four on your page. Um, one of them has a CSS API that you can use or not use however you want. <coughs> we'll open this up in an editor. Uh. All right, so this is 
the main generated file that we talked about earlier, um, it basically looks the same. So you can see these connected callback, disconnected callback. That's part of the web component lifecycle standard. Um, that's part of using the platform where you can hook into those and customize them if you want, um, but you totally don't have to as well. So um, what we can do is look at test, maybe we should say, we should test that it says um, to something like that. So this will be a little weird because I'm not going to update all of the tests to pass, I'm just going to change one of them. So when you change it, the other tests will probably fail. And then you run npm test and it'll build your stuff um, and go and run it. Um, and it should say that it failed because we made a test. We expected welcome to Ohio DevFest to include, I went to Ohio DevFest and loved it. Um, and we haven't implemented that yet. So what we could do is if we go back to the, the actual component uh, in the template, we could say, um, went to Ohio Dev Fest and um, uh, so we could do something like this, where you can say, I went to Dev Fest and if it's true or false, um, you can change what's in there. Or actually, maybe instead of having a different one, we'll do um, uh, we'll do a ternary. What did we say? What am I testing for? <laughs> Loved it. Okay. Yeah. And if awesome is false, we can. We'll just not say anything because it's better to say n nothing. And if we go back and look, um, this sh should have refreshed, but I think I have an error in my code. I broke it already. Oh, yeah. Uh, sometimes running the tests will break a currently running server. There we go. I went to Ohio DevFest. Um, that and should probably go away. So let's do this. Let's put this over to the side. And we'll put the editor to this side. And we'll come back and take this and. Put that in there. And I'm going to save it. And it's already updated on the page you're looking at. Um, and now if we run a test, we'll have other failures because we broke other tests. Um, maybe I should delete the other tests. Why don't I do, I'll, do, I'll delete the tests that don't work anymore. <laughs> don't, don't do this in real life. <laughs> I, am, I am a professional. Uh, so we will delete all those. All right, so now we only have this one test that says, I went to Ohio Dev Fest and loved it. Um, this will actually fail right now, but we have to put in a Boolean attribute saying it was awesome. And now we run the test. There's also some fun times where um, you have to be worried about new lines. Sometimes new lines will screw up those tests. 
Hooray. Um, and then the other thing we can do is if we go to package JSON, so let's do nutmeg example. So the package JSON is how you tell NPM um, how to interpret your published code. Um, so our component is Ohio dash devfest. And I should actually show you this, this is. Um, this is this is all that's going on the rendered page, or that's all you know, like that's all that goes in your HTML, and all of the actual behavior is handled off in the dependency file. So the actual tag is Ohio dash devfest, um, but npm has its own namespace restriction. So we're going to say nutmeg dash example dash Ohio devfest. Um, and then I have to get my pin out because um, it will ask me for extra security. Uh, I guess I could probably spell it correctly. Yeah. I guess the I, it's better that I misspell example than Ohio. <laughs> All right. Now I gotta find my token so that I can, uh, I have too many website logins. Here we go. No, that's the wrong one. Okay. So I hit enter. It's that's now published to npm. You can now go to npm. Um, you can go to my own your your own my own profile, and you can see that it's published a few seconds ago. Um, you can then do code pen and say new, and we'll do, um, I only need one, so this is actually uh, nutmeg example, um, and this is not necessary. And then, uh, Ohio Dev Fest, awesome. I'm missing a dash. There's a, a bug somewhere that I will have to figure out. Um, that might work. No. Uh, type. Ah, oh, I was so close too. This is gonna be the final moment. All right, oh wait, I know one other trick. It might work. Hooray. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for coming. I'll be here all day if you have any questions.